righty. Can you hear me? Yes. Lucas, go ahead. All righty. So this is a scenario based question that me and my team ran into uh, yesterday, actually. Um, so S1 has an active arrest warrant for his arrest. Uh, he does not have any status for searching. So he is not on probation or parole. Um, S1 lives with his girlfriend who is not wanted and is also not on probation or parole. Um, officers arrived at S1's residence and S1's girlfriend refused to answer the door, but officers could hear, hear S1 in the back of the apartment. Officers forced entry and ultimately took S1 under arrest and did a search incident of arrest of him. They also did a pro, um, protective suite of the residence and found two firearms in plain view. Um, my, our question was, um, ultimately, do we need to seek a warrant to verify the serial numbers of these firearms to verify if they are stolen or not? Um, we conducted a search of both people and neither one of them had firearms registered to them. What was, I, I think I missed. Sure, what was, I have it typed out. I'll put it back. I'll put it in the chat. Okay. Just in and, okay. Yeah, why were, okay. He, oh, he has an arrest warrant. Okay. An arrest and, warrant with no status. Okay. And, and he lives there. It's his girlfriend's residence, but he lives there, right? He, he, he lives the there currently. Correct. And we checked with the apartment management, which is, okay. and he is on the lease. And while we're at the door talking to girlfriend, we can hear what we believe to be him inside. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. So, so, so this the entry is lawful um, under on, for Fourth Amendment purposes. You have a, a warrant, an arrest warrant, um, for a person you reasonably believe is there, and importantly, reasonably believe he lives at that particular location. So the entry to look for him would be lawful. Correct. Mike, our question is the serial numbers on the firearms. And they were discovered during a sweep of the residence after the arrest? Yeah. Okay. So the sweep of the residence is, is going to require a reasonable suspicion. And I believe there could be other people in there that could um, harm you during the arrest process. Correct. Do we have, do we have that? Do we have this? I wasn't there. I'm asking. Um, asking. So ultimately one of my partners was in his social media um, and he has been seen with firearms in the past. Um, when they were going to arrest this person, he was retreating to the back room and they ultimately caught him before going to that back room. Um, okay. They ultimately did a protective sweep to make sure that there was nobody else in there. Because at the time they did not, they couldn't say for certainty that there wasn't. Okay. And we don't know for sure that the voice we heard was him talking, right? At the door. I mean, it could have been someone else, right? Uh, they, My point uh, is, it could be reasonable. There could be another male in that house. They strongly believed it was him, okay. but there is always that chance of error. Right. Okay. So basically, Lucas, what we have here, right, is we've got um three types of protective sweep when we make an in-home arrest right maryland versus Bowie, shimmel versus california we're talking about search incident custodial arrest of him in the immediate surrounding area right and that's to right. prevent him from gaining access to weapons affecting a means of escape or destroying evidence i can also do a protective sweep checking adjoining areas those areas that are you know immediately adjacent to the in-home arrest i can look for people in people-sized places and so if i arrest this guy in the living room I don't have to stand and body block a bedroom door and hope nobody shoots through the bedroom door and hits me in my chest plate. I can pop that door and go into that room and look for people in people-sized places. If I want to do a protective sweep throughout the entire residence, again, looking for people in people-sized places, that requires articulation. That is going to require me to convince a court that I have a reasonable basis to believe that there are dangerous confederates inside the home. And so based on the facts that you are giving me, I do not have that. If there are additional facts that say, yeah, I have reason to believe there are dangerous Confederates, not just he's got guns, because I'm not looking for guns, right? I'm looking mm -hmm. for dangerous Confederates. And so if I check those adjoining rooms uh, immediately adjacent to the arrest, 
those areas from which an attack can be immediately sprung, and I see plain view firearms, then I'm all good with that. And we can seize those um, while we're effecting the arrest, all right? Ultimately, your question is this, right? Is, if everything else is good, right? And I'm gonna right. move forward under your, under your uh, fact pattern is, is everything is good. I checked immediate adjoining areas and I found weapons in plain view. I looked for people in people-sized places and I found weapons in plain view. The question is, is running those serial numbers an additional search that requires some level of justification? Is that a fair assessment of your question? Yes. Okay. And so I'm going to tell you, I do not believe it is. Now, if you want to get if you want to get dirty with it, we can. And we can say, are the firearms inside holsters such that I have to physically manipulate them in order to see the serial number? Uh, the, the guns were just outside of holsters laying on the ground. Great. So, um, you know, I, I think Arizona versus Hicks is going to be your controlling case here. And basically, in that case, officers were validly inside a guy's residence um, in response to a welfare check, right? An emergency aid doctrine, let them in the house, got them in the apartment. And while they are so engaged, they look over and they see in this entire, you know, crap hole apartment, he's got this really brand new, beautiful stereo. And so one of the officers walks over, lifts it up, runs the serial number and confirms it's stolen. And the Arizona or the United States Supreme Court, rather, excuse me, said this is not plain view. Why? Because he had to manipulate the stereo, which stands to reason that had the serial number been plainly visible on top of the stereo and they had run it, that would not have been a Fourth Amendment implication. That would have been plain view. And so if you can see the serial numbers of these firearms and you are lawfully in possession of them while you are affecting this in-home arrest, you can run those serial numbers and it is not an additional search. Okay, thank you. Okay. Now I'm gonna just throw a caveat out there. There is an Arizona case, and I can I'll try to find it and throw it in the in the chat that says running the serial numbers is an additional search. I very much disagree with that decision, and I think that that is legally inaccurate. Okay, especially when the only information you get is whether the weapon is stolen, mm -hmm. or even if it which which you have I would think you have no expectation of privacy in that information. And even if it's, if it's a, a registry state where you determine who owns the gun, I mean, it's not reasonable to think the government isn't going to access that information from time to time if they require you to provide it. So, yeah, I think either way you cut it, it's not a search in the Fourth Amendment sense of the word to see or access the information that's associated with that serial number. Okay.